Шановні колеги, сьогодні ми зібрались з приводу засідання спеціалізованих вчених ради з права прийняття до розгляду та проведення запису дисертації опору Оміїді Качі чи Ой на здобуття ступеня доктора філософії з галузі знань 27 транспорт за спеціальністю 272 авіаційний транспорт. Спеціалізована вчена рада для проведення запису дисертації на здобуття ступеня доктора філософії Око Оміві Дікачі Чоні створено наказом 20 жовтня 2023 року номер 435 ОД відповідно до рішення вченої ради Національного авіаційного університету від 18 жовтня 2023 року. Протокол номер 11. До складу спеціалізована вчена ради ходить. Голова Ради – Авеянова Юлія Анатолійовна, доктор технічних наук, професор Національного авіаційного університету. Петрова Юлія Валерійовна, рецензент, кандидат технічних наук, доцент Національного авіаційного університету. Уланський Володимир Васильович, рецензент, доктор технічних наук, професор Національного авіаційного університету, присутній онлайн. Володимир Васильович, а ви присутні, є зв'язок, нас чутно. Володимир Васильович, ви нас чуєте? Так, я вас чую, у мене щось з камерою, доброго дня. Доброго дня. Епіфанов Сергій Валерійович, офіційний опонент, доктор технічних наук, професор Національного аеропосмічного університету імені Жуковського ХАІ. Сергій Валерійович, присутній онлайн. Так, я тут. Всім доброго дня. Доброго дня, дякую. Володин Андрій Сергійович, офіційний опонент, кандидат технічних наук, старший науковий співробітник Державного науково-дослідного інституту авіації Міністерства оборони України. Отже, всі члени спеціалізованої ради вовчерної ради присутні. Таким чином можна вважати правомочність засідання разового вчена ради правомочним. Чи є зауваження у члені вчена ради? Отже, питання про відкриття роботи разового вчена ради відкрите і пропоную проголосувати. Добре, дякуємо. Так, нам в порядку денному засідання Радзової вчені ради запис диссертаційної роботи опору у ній Діхачі чи Умо на тему «Оптимізація процесів технічного обслуговування для підтримання льотної придатності повітряних судин в Нігелії». Подано на здобуття ступеня доктора філософії з галузі знань 27 транспорт за спеціальністю 272 авіаційний транспорт. Науковий керівник, доктор технічних наук, професор Дмитрій Сергій Олексійович. Опора Омійдіка Чичиома, громадянка Нигелі, закінчила у 2018 році Національний авіаційний університет за спеціальністю 272 авіаційний транспорт. Працює в Національному університеті, авіаційному університеті МОНУ, місто Київ з 2018 року до 2022 року. Дисертація виконана в Національному авіаційному університеті МОНУ, місто Київ, науковий керівник Дмитрієв Сергій Олексійович, доктор технічних наук, професор. Здобувач має 17 наукових публікацій за темою дисертації, з них 6 статей у періодичних наукових виданнях інших держав, Три статті у наукових фахових виданнях України, вісім тест доповідей на конференціях, в тому числі у закордонних. Документи всі представлені до Ради, а також з ними можна ознайомитись на сайті Національного авіаційного університету. Чи є питання стосовно представлених документів? Ні. Також надійшла заява від здобувача 
про погоджену мову, якою він буде викладати основні положення дисертації та відповідати на запитання та подані з допомогою та відповідати на запитання. Враховуючи той факт, що всі члени Ради Волочерної Ради володіють англійською мовою в достатній мірі, про що є відповідні документи, є пропозиція задовольнити заяву здобувача про мову, яку він буде викладати основні положення дисертації та відповідати на запитання. Чи є заперечення, чи є згода членів спеціалізованої вчені Ради? Пропоную поставити питання на голосування. Згодні? Чи є заперечення? Немає. Тримались? Немає. Отже, пропоную перейти до порядку денного. Запрошую з добувача. Опора у ній діка чи чого? до викладення основних положень диссертації та його основних положень диссертації. You are welcome to start your presentation. Good afternoon, everyone, members of my committee, guests, my supervisor, those online, everyone present. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I'd like to confirm. Um, can you hear me, Professor Vladimir, Professor? Can you hear me? So that is. Professor Sergei and Professor Vladimir, can you hear me? I need to confirm if you can hear me. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, I don't think they can hear me. Uh, Professor uh, Vladimir Ulansky and Professor uh, Sergei Pifanov, can you confirm that you can hear uh, Choma presentation? Uh, oh, he's on mute. Yes, I am watching your presentation. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. I will proceed now. Um, this dissertation was submitted in with the field of requirements for the degree of doctor of philosophy. It was prepared by myself on the disposition of my uh, supervisor, Dr. Uh, Dimitri Seki, and it was on the topic optimization of aircraft maintenance uh, processes for continued airworthiness in Nigeria. The dissertation was is made up of an introduction that it has four chapters, uh, a conclusion, a list of references, two appendixes, and it was contained in 191 pages with 51 figures, 18 tables, 174 references, two appendixes. The first chapter gave an overview of aircraft maintenance in Nigeria, an in-depth analysis of the existing um, maintenance optimization models was carried out and the simple numerical reliability of analysis of aircraft operating in Nigeria was also done in chapter one. The second chapter was devoted to developing models and algorithms for optimizing maintenance processes based on principles of reliability theory, predictive analytics, regression, machine learning, probability, and statistics theories. 
In the third chapter, the models which were developed in the second chapter were tested for goodness of fits, and they were validated using daily aircraft operations data from Nigeria. In the fourth chapter, a simple and expandable four-step methodology for the optimization of aircraft maintenance processes was developed, and the conclusions were also presented in the conclusions chapter. My dissertation was discussed at 13 international congresses, symposiums, and conferences. The main results of this research were obtained by myself independently, and the contents have been published in 13 publications, including nine proceedings of international congresses, symposiums, and conferences, and all publications were indexed in international databases, including seven scopus. The results of my dissertation are implemented in the curriculum of Consul Airworthiness Department, where I finished my dissertation. Uh, the relevance of this topic is based on two things. Number one, the operations phase of the aircraft life cycle is the most expensive, costing 10 to, 10 times, 10 to 20 times the design and the manufacturing phase. And secondly, of this cost, 10 to 20% goes aircraft maintenance, and in places like West Africa, because of the challenges there, it can be more than 20% going as high as that. Therefore, there is a need to develop models and algorithms for optimizing maintenance processes, not just in regions struggling like West Africa, but also can be adopted globally. Like I previously mentioned, the aim of the study is increased efficiency and cost effectiveness of aircraft operations from an aircraft maintenance point of view. The following objectives were addressed in the dissertation. One, uh, to understand existing maintenance strategies using the scenario in Nigeria. Number two, to develop models that can be implemented for reliability centered maintenance and condition based maintenance. Three, to develop mathematical models for determining optimal flight hour for aircraft maintenance. Part one, develop a maintenance model for determining optimal maintenance task intervals. The fifth one was uh, models for precise forecast of spare parts inventory and demand. And all these were <coughs> the increase of steady state availability of components and systems and to increase uh, levels of targeted maintenance. Additionally, a framework that can form uh, the basis of maintenance optimization from the design phase of aircraft life cycle. This novelty of the results are as follows. For the first time, statistical simulation models that can be applied both to large and small data sets, which are quite prevalent in small scale operations, can, and uh, were developed. And these models can be used to improve this framework of reliability centered maintenance and condition based maintenance. For the first time, segmented regression models were developed in the context of prediction of flight hour at which an aircraft component system or a subsystem is likely to fail. For the first time, optimal aircraft maintenance task interval was determined using average operational cost per unit time as measure of efficiency. For the first time, the model was which considers historical trend of component failures for forecast and spare parts in inventory was also developed. And for the first time, a concise model that integrates both reliability parameters, failure prediction, cost, spare parts in inventory was developed to optimize maintenance all geared towards continued airworthiness. The significance, the practical significance of the result as follows. Uh, like I previously mentioned, techniques for reliability analysis for both uh, data sets when it's more than 35 and less than 35 as well. Uh, the one for the small data sets is based on curvature reduced equation, while the one for the large data set is based on the exponential. <coughs> And then the third one was a technique for predicting flight hour at which the failure of an aircraft component or subsystem is likely to happen. This is very important as uh, lack of uh, correct prediction leads to flight delays, aircraft on ground, downtime, and of course, uh, loss of revenue. 
a technique for determining optimal aircraft interval using average operational cost as measure of efficiency. It was based, two models were tested, and uh, it was uh, determined that the airline's uh, uh, model was the optimal one that quantifies the uh, cost of corrective maintenance and preventive maintenance while uh, maintaining an optimal balance alongside the uh, maintenance benefits. Uh, a, te a technique for forecasting aircraft aircraft inventory for non-referable items and the exponentially distributed time between failures was also determined. And finally, so as previously mentioned, it's a simple and expandable model that puts all these models together into one framework of optimizing the craft features. Uh, as I previously mentioned, maintenance costs uh, take up 10 to 20 percent of aircraft operations, and in most cases in West Africa, up to 30 percent. There are lots of uh, models out there that have been proposed by several researchers. These were based on planning, scheduling, maintenance routing, spare parts inventory, personnel and skill management, prognostics and health uh, management of data, and then reliability models. However, not much attention is paid to models that combine reliability, uh, industry 4.0 techniques like machine learning, regression, probability and statistics, especially in the area of optimizing and cost maintenance. Furthermore, in the aviation industry, we need realism in the way the optimization question is solved from the design phase. Uh, system reliability, maintenance processes and costs should be considered from the design phase of aircraft life cycle. To begin the, the uh, development of the models, I started out with a simple numerical reliability analysis using data from pilot and maintenance records of aircraft operating in Nigeria. I considered um, operations from two series of helicopters, S-92, C-92, and C-76, and um, this is um, a diagram, uh, histogram showing the faults and failures of the most failing uh, systems are shown. Also, for airplanes, I considered ERJ-135, uh, MD-83, and ATR-42. All aircrafts are operating in Nigeria. Same thing also from pilot and maintenance records. I also analyzed uh, the results of the numerical reliability indicators based on the failure rates and based on the backdoor uh, call for representing the uh, failure behaviors of engineering outcomes. And then based on that, I moved on to now develop my own models. The first one is a model for reliability analysis when the data set is more than 35. This is usually common in a lot of systems. And, it's, and I based it off of uh, exponential model. And I started out uh, with the exponential model and then the include data was uh, the matrix of the pilot and maintenance records I previously obtained. And based on that, obtained the time series D. And from this time series D, time moment at which F, uh, time moment at which uh, I failure F occurred, was gotten. However, F is a two-dimensional array of matrix and cannot be plotted, so I determined RA, and AI is what was used to plot the probability density functions, and based on that, the reliability indicators were determined. For the second one, uh, it's not in all cases that we have data set that is more than 35. There are really small operations and there are systems that don't always fail, but still we need to know um, how those systems are doing. The hence the need for this model that was based on Kazakiewicz's formula. First of all, like uh, finding the failure rate and then based on that, finding the probability that one minus the failure rate that gets it. And then after that, there was a need to uh, determine uh, the optimal time to carry out a maintenance task. Uh, I tested two models using average operational cost per unit time as my uh, indicator of efficiency. For the uh, exponential model, um, I found that there was no optimal minimum point 
when you use cost of uh, corrective maintenance and cost of uh, preventive maintenance. However, when you do that for Evelance model, there is an optimal point that you can uh, assign to be an optimal maintenance uh, task interval type. This model, however, is different from the one of reliability analysis. At this model, we're just trying to find optimal points of maintenance based on cost and not based on time of maintenance records. And then um, the need to determine at what point am I likely to see a failure? Uh, and I decided to test out regression models. I started out by testing simple regression models. However, I noticed some breaking points. Hence, I decided to go for uh, segmented regression uh, models. I tested three, quadratic linear, linear linear, and quadratic quadratic. The unknown coefficients were calculated using uh, our ordinary experiment. And then spare parts, the most important part. If you lack a spare part, aircraft is on ground, loss of revenue. Uh, based on the failure parameters, failure rates uh, parameters determined, I was able to design two models for aircraft spare parts maintenance. One is based on the cumulative probability of maximum consumption of spare parts, and the other one is described, is, sorry, is based on Poisson formulas. I had to do that so that I can test to be sure that both models were, were acting as tests for each other to be precise and accurate in the forecast of spare parts. And then from the second chapter, like I previously mentioned, I had analyzed some data of real aircraft operations. I tested that data for the first reliability analysis uh, for more than 35 data sets. I was able to get probability density functions, and based on that, the reliability indicators of the failure rate, mean time between failures, and number of failures likely to occur in 1,000 flight hours was determined. For this small data set, um, same thing, I took a system that had really small data, I think about 10, and based on that, I, I did the simulation uh, based on the model that I developed, it gave me quantiles of normal distribution, and based on those quantiles, uh, I was able to find the failure probability, sorry, the failure rates using the failure probability graph. And then determining the optimal maintenance class interval, like I previously mentioned, this was just based on cost of corrective maintenance, cost of preventive maintenance, and the probability density functions of the Erlang model and the observed time interval. As I previously mentioned, two models were tested. The first one is for exponential, and the other one is the Erlang. Um, when I showed the mathematical model, I did mention that for the exponential, there was no optimal point. As you see, it just tends to infinity. However, for the Erlang model, it's very clear where the optimal uh, minimal point lies. And that is what would correspond to the optimal maintenance task interval. Uh, for the segmented regression models, I tested three, as I previously mentioned. Uh, and for each of them, I changed uh, switching points M. And I also determined standard deviation for a lot of time for each of the models. And then the, the minimum uh, switching points that had the least standard deviation was for the quadratic quadratic segmented regression model. And I determined that this model was the most concise for determining the optimal flight hour when the failure was likely to occur. And then for spare parts, uh, that's the process that I previously mentioned, imputing the data based on the failure rates. And um, I, I imagine that my probability of failure free operation, because we don't live in an ideal world, I kept it at 0.95, which is reasonably higher because lately you would see like a good, like really efficient operation has somewhere about 0.85, but I tried to raise it up to 0.95. 
to carry out the simulation. And I got a graph of families uh, that gave the table for the system based on the initially determined failure rate. And that would be the optimal number of spare parts that you should have. Now, this is assuming that the component parts are non repairable and they are not in the minimum equipment list. Because in some cases, when a, a part goes bad, you can still sign up the aircraft if that part is on the minimum equipment list. But these models were on the assumption that that part is not on the MEL list and it was non repairable. So this is something that can lead to that being on ground. And uh, finally, I was able to put all these models in a four-step uh, methodology for optimizing aircraft maintenance processes, for continuing airworthiness. And this four-step model uh, would give you an optimized and driven predictive aircraft maintenance. Now, in present time, we currently have Corrective aircraft maintenance, that is, means something breaks down, we take it out. But the thing about this one is that you don't know when it's going to break down. And if it breaks down when you don't have stairs, the aircraft is going to be on ground. The second one would be as designed in the maintenance review board reports. The uh, manufacturer tells you take out X components by 1,000 flight hours. In many cases, when you take out that component, you realize that there are no fault founds. The component is still in good condition, but you cannot risk putting it back. Sometimes the regulator might give you some sort of concession, but this doesn't always happen. And you're not even sure as to, if I put it with the break down stuff, people just put no fault found and then send it to another industry for recycling. However, with data-driven uh, predictive maintenance, uh, you will find an optimal point between corrective and preventive. So you're taking it out when you have used it enough, but not so bad that you suddenly have an aircraft grounded. Uh, and in conclusion, like I mentioned, operation phase will cost you 10 to 20 times more than design. And in-depth analysis of operations, uh, especially in countries like West Africa, is showing that despite an increase in traffic, we are, we're back to pre-COVID uh, traffic times, they're still spending at least up to anywhere upwards of 30% of their revenue purely on maintenance. Um, so reliability models were developed to help form the framework for reliability center maintenance. And um, uh, an attempt to carry out failure prediction was done, and it was tested that uh, we can actually use a quadratic, quadratic segmented regression model for this. And then um, uh, an initial attempt using uh, maintenance cost, determining our, our efficiency of aircraft operation to determine optimal maintenance task interval was carried out and we realized that Erlang could give us an optimal maintenance task interval. And for spare parts, models were developed to forecast at least the probability of failure free operations of uh, 0.95. And then uh, because we cannot just use all these models as standalone, it will lead to an increase in time. It was consolidated into a four-step framework for optimizing aircraft maintenance. And this, the results of this, um, of using of this framework can also help us during the design phase. So we're not just answering the maintenance optimization question when we get to operation, but we're answering it from the design phase, especially given that we've had at least 100 years of operations of aircraft uh, in the world. And with that, I've come to the end of my presentation. I'd like to thank, first of all, when I moved to Ukraine, I was quite young. I came as an undergrad, um, it was 2011. <laughs> I was quite little, I was about 19 then. I studied same faculty, bachelor's, master's, and now PhD, so it's been a journey. Um, Ukraine has been a very important part of my life. I've grown, um, thanks to the education that I got here, I have a good job and a good life in Canada. 
I want to thank everyone. I remember Jimmy Kirby was my professor. Everyone there, here, yeah, Maxine, my mentor, Professor Rudai, <laughs> and everyone here present. It's been a journey, and um, I really want to say thank you. And yeah, that's my dissertation. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation of your scientific research and your work. And uh, now I'd like to let us questions. I'm very grateful. Tell me, please, uh, what kind of data did you use in your work? It was just, you know, so when doing aircraft operations, uh, pilots, if they notice something in flight, they would record it. It's all pilot reports, called pilot for sure. Mm -hmm. And during maintenance, if the maintenance guy may be doing like a pre flight check or something, check something, it's called a maintenance report. So I was, I got this data, it's like real from aircraft operating in Nigeria. I cleaned it up. It wasn't like <laughs> you made three minutes. It took time to clean it up based on ATA numbers, and that was the data that I used. So it's real daily aircraft. Mm -hmm. And the thing about this data is that it's stored, and no one needs it for anything. Mm -hmm. uh, did you use deep learning? No, no, no. I just used only machine learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. May I ask a good question? Yes, you're welcome. Uh, it's a bit fun of uh, the title of uh, uh, the work emphasizes that the research is <laughs> was carried out taking into account uh, the peculiarities of aircraft uh, maintenance in Nigeria. Please tell us about these specific features and how they are taken into account in your work. Okay, like I previously mentioned, I made use of uh, pilot reports data and maintenance report data, uh, which every day happens uh, you know, during operation. That was what I used for input data for the reliability models, the spare parts model, the regression model. For the optimal maintenance task interval. I used arbitrary numbers because it was difficult to get a hold of the actual cost of corrective and um, preventive maintenance costs. This is actually very secret data. So that was the only case I didn't use real life data. Also, I spoke to a lot of engineers uh, to understand the scenario before I decided on using the models that I used. So in Nigeria, they don't have um, places where they can do heavy C and D checks. They have to fly the aircraft out. Secondly, spare parts companies are not close by. So you're probably, if you need something today, the, high, the quickest you can get it is on a seven hour flight from Aberdeen. That is if Aberdeen workers are open. If they're not open 24 hours, aircraft is on ground and you're not flying. So that was the basis on which I developed and did my research. So it was real data, talking to people and also analyzing operations data in that country. Um, but uh, have you enough uh, information uh, for as initial data for your methods in Nigeria? Yes, it was based on all the initial data except for one model was based on uh, reports from Nigeria, data from Nigeria. It was real data that I cleaned up. Uh, thank you. The next question is about the uh, proposed method for an optim optimum service interval determining. How can you justify the reliability of the results that uh, this method gives? Tell us about what initial data is needed to apply and how uh, the influence of errors in this initial data on the result was studied. Okay, so the initial uh, in data for this model was cost of corrective maintenance, cost of uh, preventive maintenance. These two are traditionally used maintenance every day, uh, the observed time interval, and probability density function. I chose exponential because it's commonly used. I needed to test if there was any way. 
I could find some sort of optimality, but unfortunately it tended to zero. This data, however, the input data, I couldn't get real life data. So I used like arbitrary data, randomly generated data based on Monte Carlo simulation. For the Eblanc uh, model, there was an optimal point and both the analytical and the simulation results showed that um, there was an optimal and they coincided. So that was what I did. In this case, uh, like I also previously mentioned, I didn't use actual data. It was randomly generated. I couldn't lay my hands on data. It is uh, data. Can you show simulation uh, of the situation when initial error, initial data uh, are not uh, are not true? They have some errors. Uh, for which for which model? Uh, for for some for some what model in your consequence of methods? Uh, do you do you mean the optimal measurement task interval model or the small data set or any model at all? Yeah. For for example, for the method uh, of uh, optimum interval determining, you need you use some initial data. What will be uh, if these data are not full reliable? So for this one, uh, the data that I used, like I mentioned, was uh, arbitrary data. It was randomly generated and I corrected this data for outliers or for some errors. I couldn't lay my hands on real life data. And this was the only <clears> model that I didn't use like any real life. It was, it's almost difficult to go to airlines. They're very secretive with their data. They don't want to give it out because it's aviation industry. And yeah, in this case, I didn't use any real data. It was randomly generated for this one. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, my the last question is about comparison of the proposed methods with uh, some methods which are already used or were used previously? For example, the problem of optimum interval between service actions. By somewhat method, this interval is predicted without you, but you propose some new method. Do you compare with previous decisions? Yes, I did. Uh, the existing uh, models that we have results in corrective and preventive aircraft maintenance. And this um, model that I predicted, which I will continue to work on based on your review comments, will definitely lead us to a point where we have some sort of optimal data-driven interval for maintenance and we can see some sort of reduced cost of operation. Maybe we would go from 10 to 20% to maybe somewhere like 5 to 10%. Uh, yeah. I, I, not, I not see numerical digital comparison here. Um, Please I, exp I, explain what, what is health? What is your vert vertical axis in these diagrams? Uh, so in the in the diagram, that would be like the aircraft life cycle. What numerical parameter means health? That would be a life cycle of the aircraft. That would be flight hours. Flight hours? For this part, it would be based on the life cycle of the aircraft and here would be the flight hours. It's not enough understanding. Flight hours not depend on time. It depends on uh, flight cycle, maybe timetable. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't understand your question about flight hour not depending on time. Uh, what is numerical value of your vertical axis in this diagram? What do you express here? What is aircraft structure health? 
Oh, that would be uh, the, it would be based on reliability parameters like failure rates, mean time between failure. Uh, understand. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, more questions. And so, uh, what indicators of capable condition and ability have you considered uh, during a uh, draft mind test? Um, sorry. What uh, indication? Uh, indicators of oh, yes. failure rates, mean time between failure, uh, number of failure occurring every 1,005 hours. Those were the basic ones that I used. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I used 1,005 hours was I also wanted to consider not just like operations that have, for instance, uh, Canada or Qatar Airways, but also the regional small operations so that they can also use this methodology. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, please uh, tell me uh, how the quadratic quadratic uh, segmented re regression can be added uh, in the actual operation in effect. So why this why mm -hmm. this figure would give you the flight hour. So if you impute this uh, this equation based on the failure rate, which is the input data, and M, which are already determined as an optimal switching point, it will give you a flight hour. For instance, uh, it will tell you at 100 flight hours how many failures you're going to see. Like, if you're planning your maintenance, it's mostly planned based on flight cycles or flight hours. So this will give you, if I'm at like, 99 flight hours, and I see that the failure is going to occur at 100, I should already order my spare parts or something. So to give you flight hour or flight cycle based on failure rates. Thank you. More questions? Uh, may I ask questions? Yes, you're welcome. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, Ms. Chioma, are you hearing me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I have some questions uh, related to your dissertation. Uh, so in section uh, 2.3.3, uh, 2 uh, pages 99-100, you presented evidence that there is no optimal interval for performing preventive maintenance for systems with an exponential time to fail or distribution. It is important to note that this fact has long been described in the technical literature. What was the reason to include uh, this uh, proof in the dissertation? Uh, so this, this was uh, in the context of what has already been done. It wasn't tested on the cost of corrective maintenance of aircraft spare parts. Uh, preventive maintenance of aircraft component, and that was why I decided to test it for exponential first of all, before moving on to choose another model. Okay, uh, next question, please. Uh, it is connected to this question also. Please uh, open uh, slide 17. Slide seven, uh, 17, 18, 17, yes. Uh, so equation 2.24, yes? Yes. So it is clear from equation uh, 2.24 that after preventive maintenance, the system becomes as good as new. What is the degree of the system restoration after corrective maintenance in your model? Uh, uh, I went through your uh, review comments and I intend to uh, study this further in my further research. This wasn't determined, I only uh, calculated for optimality to try to. Find no, my, uh, uh, Ms. Schumer, uh, let me repeat my question. Uh, after uh, preventive maintenance, the system in your model becomes as good as new. This is perfect repair. Such repair is called uh, perf perfect repair. Okay, uh, after corrective maintenance, what is the kind of repair? Perfect repair or minimal repair 
or uh, in, uh, unperfect repair, imperfect repair, what kind of repair after corrective maintenance? Because it is included in your... Oh, sorry about that. After corrective maintenance, it's not, it's not a perfect maintenance, but it's not good as new. It's just something corrected. It's a repair. It's not a removal. No, you didn't answer on my questions. The system after corrective maintenance becomes as good as new or not? No, it doesn't. In this case, what is the kind of uh, repair model? After corrective maintenance, the system becomes like uh, after minimal repair. Uh, after corrective maintenance, uh, it it becomes just like a system of minimal repair. It's not as good as new. That's what I consider. However, okay. in, my, in my future research work, I will look at this uh, optimality question in more details and try to also find real data to explore this model. Okay, uh, thank you for your answer. And uh, next question. On uh, page 41, you wrote the following. Optimization of the aircraft maintenance is based on a wide range of decisions aimed at maximizing revenues while maintaining high availability, uh, simultaneously minimizing costs. The question is uh, as follows. Do you think that it is possible to maximize revenue while minimizing maintenance costs? Uh, yes, that's the, the whole essence of this research. When you mis minimize cost of operations, uh, that's cost that should have gone in like excessive maintenance or paying for spare parts or the aircraft being on ground goes to become revenue. Okay, uh, Ms. Shoma, from mathematics, it is well known that it is not possible to uh, reach maximum for revenue and minimum for uh, costs at the same time. So if you would like to reach uh, maximum revenue, there should be a limitation for uh, maintenance costs or uh, vice versa. Minimum, uh, re uh, minimum maintenance costs at uh, uh, the limitation of revenue. At the same time, it is not possible to reach maximum for revenue and minimum for uh, maintenance costs. Uh, I understand that fully. What I'm, we're not going to go to an extreme minimum. We're just going to try to reduce, go from 10 to 20% of cost of operations for maintenance to about five to 10%. And we see that five to 10% that we cut off going back to revenue. So it's not like an absolute uh, minimum. No, it's still like significant reduction but not an absolute minimum. Okay, such uh, sentences should be written uh, carefully. <laughs> okay. okay, next, uh, next my question. Why you did not, uh, did not use the mean time between unscheduled repairs instead of mean time between failures? Before, uh, because uh, mean time between failures, uh, this uh, efficiency indicators, is, is usually used in the design stage, not in the operation and maintenance stage. In the operation and maintenance uh, stage, airlines are usually used mean time between unscheduled removals. So the intent of this research was to have a model that can also be used from the design phase. However, uh, in my future work, I will also con uh, consider something that will only be used for operation space. Okay, and next question. Please uh, open slide 28. Okay. Yes, this slide. So in this slide, uh, you showed uh, corrective aircraft, illustrated corrective aircraft maintenance preventive aircraft maintenance uh, that you consider it in your thesis, and also predictive aircraft maintenance. Uh, what did you do in dissertation uh, for predictive aircraft maintenance? Uh, 
in my dissertation, uh, I wrote it in the fourth uh, chapter four that the models that I developed can, alongside the other models uh, proposed by other innovators and researchers, can form the basis for data driven predictive aircraft maintenance. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And uh, one more question related to condition-based maintenance. Uh, you didn't uh, mention this type or this method of maintenance uh, in your dissertation. What was the reason? To avoid the consideration of condition-based maintenance. Uh, I intend to study that in my future research. For this one, I mostly focused on uh, reliability Sentence emitted uh, models, but in the future, I will consider condition based maintenance. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Some questions. Uh, so, maybe my questions for you. Uh, you considered the optimization of maintenance for some particular area in Nigeria. Uh, the question is Have you considered the environmental conditions impact? into the maintenance? Uh, no, I didn't consider the environmental impact uh, simply because I didn't use two countries. Mm -hmm. I only used one data. If in the future I can get, for instance, data of somewhere in the Arctic where it's very cold, then I can start considering environmental, but I only used one region that is influenced by dust and salt water. So I don't have anything to talk about. It's like automatically taken into account because of database was formed from Nigeria. Uh, no, I didn't consider like environment at all because I had nothing to compare with. There was no comparison of saying, okay, in uh, the Arctic or Antarctica or if, if like Canada, this is what I'm saying. I just had like one set of data. I didn't consider environment, but in the future, if I have like another mm -hmm. set of data from maybe a cold region, I will consider that no environment was Okay, thank you. Some more questions? Mm -hmm. Great, Professor uh, About the Nigeria aeronautical engineering industry, I don't know uh, correctly as a movie enterprise that was about in flight operation, in maintenance process. Uh, Can you describe a little? Uh, it's possible to improve. The achievement of your dissertation in activity of this enterprise. Yes, it is. It is. However, one of the challenges that I have faced is that in the aviation industry, data is very secret. It's okay. It's okay. It's wow. very secret. So to try to convince them to use this, I have tried and I'm still trying. Hopefully, someday it's like the next steps. I will try to see how this. Um, running this data can actually go into maintenance like optimization, planning, and all that. That's like future consideration, which I have already started. It is possible, but it's never been done before. I hope that it will. It will okay. okay, thank you, Doctor. Uh, no, it's anyway, uh, you should, you have to find the quality information, uh, statistics, data, information, and so on, in order to, uh, in a uh, process of improving. Uh, some uh, this mechanism, some instruments of cooperation, relationship with enterprise, how this should be best. It's understandable. I don't uh, try to take information, secret information, it's of course. Uh, but uh, what uh, uh, maybe some um, position in this area of information we can out, we can open. Okay, it's uh, concerned to uh, the what methods, uh, maintenance methods previously. Uh, no, uh, use your uh, airlines for some aviation technical base and other enterprise is uh, proactive, preventive, corrective. So they always do corrective and preventive. So corrective, okay. and then they also do the ones based on the um, manufacturers. Oh, okay. No, you know that in order to provide some uh, uh, improvement of your achievement. Nice to have a good in uh, uh, aircraft uh, fleet with according parameters, modern aircraft mostly, which has according 
uh, testing uh, uh, mechanism, computer system, which give possibility to uh, define state of the graph, uh, element system, aggregates, and so on, in order to have some parameters to realize uh, preventive, uh, uh, preventive main. Uh, does it uh, Nigeria has according condition in order to provide this type of uh, no, maintenance? No. I think. They don't have like those aircraft that have sensors, typically, like they're not operated in third world countries like Nigeria, unfortunately. That was why I didn't use like some sort of already cleaned up data from the system. I had to use like something manual method, cleaned it up myself. However, in the future, as aviation grows, you will begin to see more systems that have like um, health monitoring sensors and all. And then this is where they, uh, models like this can like really, really, really be like perfect for operations. That was why I consider only models that can be used not just during operations, but also from design phase of the aircraft life cycle. But Same for thing now, we don't have to do maybe in the future. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, I would like to thank uh, for all the participants and uh, uh, Chioma uh, for your presentation and uh, answers. Thank you very much, Dean. Thank you. Uh, so, Takush, я хотела зазначити, що до що до чинно ради були надані відгуки наукового керівника та рецензентів, які розміщені у відкритому доступі на сайті чинно ради Національного авіаційного університету. А чи є у членів спеціалізованого членів ради питання чи зауваження щодо відгуків наукового керівника та рецензії рецензентів? Немає. А тоді слово надається офіційному опоненту Епіфанову Сергію Валерійовичу, доктору технічних наук, професору Національного аерокосмічного університету імені Жуковського. Шановний Сергій Валерійович, вас не чутно, якщо можна. Може, ви, ви, ви вимкнули мікрофон, включіть його, будь ласка. Так, так, ви... Це добре, дякую, дуже дякую. Так, я, щоб трошки зекономити час, не буду, якщо дозволити, дослівно зачитувати весь мій відгук, а зауваження я ну, буду... Дослівно зачитувати. Я хочу е, підкреслити е, практичну е, і та наукову актуальність роботи, бо е, звичайно е, робота, що спрямована на пошук нових рішень в галузі визначення оптимальної періодичності експлуатаційних впливів на об'єкт експлуатації є безумовно актуальною. А Зазначена задача потребує раціонального узгодження між економічними та е, втратами, пов'язаними з поновленням елементів, вузлів та систем, які спричинено відмовами. Відомі публікації за цією темою е, ну, в своїй більшості мають рекламний характер, я маю на увазі, закордонні публікації, вони не розкривають методичні аспекти і сконцентровані головним чином на економічних критеріях, у наслідок чого недостатньо ураховують показники надійності. Це, на мій погляд, визначає наукову актуальність та значення цієї роботи. Е, 
Я аналізував роботу, вона містить усі необхідні компоненти роботи, представленої на здобуття наукового ступеня доктора філософії. Її обґрунтованість отриманих результатів, вона не викликає сумніву, вражає приємно кількість апробації цієї роботи на е, наукових конференціях е, високого рівня і достатня е, кількість публікацій у фахових виданнях. Що стосується зауважень? Я розбив їх на дві групи. Е, перша група – це зауваження до е, власне, методичних аспектів, Методик дослідження та моделей. А друга група – це більше редакційні та зауваження щодо подання деяких елементів роботи. Перше. У розділі 3 спочатку було обґрунтована доцільність використання експоненційної моделі надійності. А потім показано, що ця модель дає нескінченний оптимальний інтервал часу обслуговування. Тобто приводить до абсурдного результату. Друге зауваження. У підрозділі 2.2.2 авторам представлена математична модель у вигляді алгоритму, яка в подальшому використовується для прогнозування надійності авіаційних систем і, відповідно, для оптимізації обслуговування. У роботі немає інформації щодо того, як виконувалось і чи виконувалось взагалі дослідження впливу різних факторів, зокрема похибок вимірювання, інтенсивності відмов, об'єму використованих даних тощо, на вірогідність моделі, на вірогідність рішень, які приймаються в експлуатації, а також на ефективність експлуатації. Третє зауваження. Пропонований у роботі чотирикроковий алгоритм оптимізації Обслуговування базується на використанні критерія середніх експлуатаційних витрат 2.8 формула, у якій входять вартості періодичного та коригуючого обслуговування. Очевидно, що вартість коригуючого обслуговування суттєво залежить від типу та глибини відмови. Однак у роботі це не урахується. Напевно, пропонується використовувати якесь осередне незначення. Але як його визначити з урахуванням різних значень інтенсивності та різних рівнів глибини первинних та вторинних відмов? Це не розглянуто. Четверте зауваження. У результаті робіт з практичного випробування запропонованого методу і моделі було б доцільно оцінити їх ефективність порівняно з існуючими підходами на будь-якому прикладі, бажано пов'язаному з досвідом експлуатації повітряних суден в Нігерії. Ну, там е, я подібне питання задавав і мені показували відповідь, але ж там практичних даних не було. Там були аналітичні моделі та результати е, розрахунку за якимись програмами. І зауваження щодо подання та оформлення дисертації, вони такі. Пункти 1 і 2 наукової новизни сформульовано не досить повно. Не визначено, чим відрізняються нові моделі від існуючих. Пункт 3 наукової новизни сформульовано таким чином. Перше, визначено оптимальний інтервал виконання завдань по технічному обслуговуванню повітряних суден з використанням середніх експлуатаційних витрат як міри ефективності. Це не є цілком коректним, тому що періодичність обслуговування завжди визначається як компроміс між втратами, пов'язаними зі зниженням надійності, зокрема збільшенням ймовірності відмов, та втратами на обслуговування. Як відомий приклад, в області експлуатації газотурбінних установок можна привести визначення періодичності промивок 
проточної частини газотурбінних установок наземного використання. Є невірним також включене до цього пункту твердження про те, що зазвичай періодичність технічного обслуговування визначається тільки з урахуванням витрат на обслуговування, незважаючи на зниження показників надійності. Якщо виходити тільки з вартості витрат на обслуговування, найвигіднішою стратегією є експлуатація без обслуговування. І останнє зауваження – аналіз проблеми в розділі 1 дисертації зазвичай проводиться для визначення критичних нерозв'язаних завдань на шляху до мети роботи і формулювання відповідних задач дисертаційного дослідження. Такого обґрунтування формулювання задач в зазначеному розділі бракує. Ну а висновки у мене позитивні, бо ці зауваження, вони не впливають на загальну позитивну оцінку роботи. Мабуть, скоріше вони є наслідком складності процесів, які розглянуто автором. Тисертаційна робота виконана на високому науковому рівні та є значною працею, яка містить нові науково обґрунтовані результати у галузі авіаційного транспорту, які є вирішенням важливого науково-практичного завдання досконалення процесів технічного обслуговування для підтримання льотної придатності повітряних суден. Дисертація відповідає спеціальності авіаційний транспорт і е, таким чином дисертація задовольняє вимоги і е, автор заслуговує присвоєння вченого ступеня доктора філософії. У мене все. Дякуємо, Сергію Валерійовичу. Thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Сергій Іпіпанов. Uh, Чома, you are welcome if you have some answer, answers to the remarks of the official opponent. Professor Іпіпанов, you are welcome. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I, so the work was written in English and in Ukrainian. And when I read his review saying that I didn't use data from Nigeria, I was I didn't understand the context because I used real data. It was in chapter one. Uh, there were, I think, five tables that had this pilot's reports and maintenance reports in flights and on ground. It was there in chapter one. I listed all the data from the aircraft. The only instance where I didn't use data, like I mentioned during my presentation, was only one model when I had to use data for cost of corrective maintenance, cost of preventive. I didn't find that data, so it was randomly generated. That's um, one. And then uh, he mentioned, uh, sorry, I translated from Ukrainian to English before the uh, presentation. He mentioned something about, correct me from wrong, maybe I didn't understand why I didn't translate well, uh, the first and the second uh, new ideas for reliability. Actually, there was no existing model that considered both large and small data sets. It's like a very huge like scientific problem. And uh, I found this formula like the Kiavichis and used it. Hence, I said it was a new form. There is no place that you would have like small data sets using Kazakiavich's formula. That's why I considered it a, a scientific novelty. Uh, the other comments, can you please help me to translate? Then I know I saw something about uh, why I used exponential model and said it wasn't um, optimal. Now, the first time that I considered exponential model was in the context of reliability analysis, not finding an optimal maintenance task interval. Those are two different things. Reliability analysis was to give reliability indicators like failure rates, mean time between failure and uh, number of failures per 1,000 flight hours. That was like the first reliability model. When uh, optimal maintenance task interval, it's a different model. It's not the same 
uh, basis. But I use like probability density function of exponential model as initial data to analyze for optimality to um, make uh, to use this as an optimal maintenance task interval, not reliability indicator. That's a totally different uh, topic. Uh, I think that's, I can't remember the other ones. I tried to follow my Ukrainian is not like very good as, as it should be. Uh, maybe if you try to tell, tell me. Um, maybe some, uh, was it all um, remarks, Professor Sergei Epipanov, or maybe some more? Have uh, Chioma answered all your remarks? Yeah. Okay. I'm satisfied. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, to, uh, uh, slovo nadajitsa oficinomu oponentu uh, Bologinu Andreju Sergijevicu, kandidatu technicznych nauk, starszemu naukowemu spiegrobitniku, dažarnemu naukowemu dosvitnemu instytutu aviacji. Тож за це я хочу зазначити, що мені було надана роботу і можливість ознайомитися з цією роботою, можливість задати питання, які мене цікавлять. Це все було організовано, за це хочу подякувати. В роботі розглянута на мій погляд, дуже актуальна тема, яка стосується саме оптимізації системи експлуатації повітряних судів. Чому я наполягаю на актуальності цієї теми? Тому що навіть у військовій авіації ці питання дуже актуальні, і вони стосуються і економічних аспектів, і часових і працевитрат, і, саме головне, максимального використання ресурсних можливостей повітряних суден з збереженням заданого рівня надійності. В результаті виконання дисертаційного дослідження отримано нові наукові результати, практичне впровадження яких в систему сучасної експлуатації повітряних суден дозволить більш ефективно використовувати ці повітряні судна на призначення. Досягнення результату вказує на те, що добувач оволодів загальною методологією наукової діяльності, методами збору, представлення обробки зберігання даних про технічний стан повітряних судн і передачу доступу таких даних до комп'ютерних систем. Що стосується зауважень по роботі, Ну, я також з вашого дозволу зачитаю деякі з них основні. Перше. Гістограми на рисунках 1, 10, 1, 14 відображують тільки нарабі так на відмову в польоті, але діаграми нарабі так на відмову, що спостерігається від час технічного обслуговування, не наводиться. На мій погляд було б цікаво узнати показники надійності відмов та несправності, що спостерігається під час технічного обслуговування. Друге, зрозуміло, чому у дослідженні використовується моделювання методом Монтекарно. Однак слід було б надати короткий огляд двох інших методів прогнозування надійності, таких як методи моделювання Монтеків Маркова та комбінованих методів класичного аналізу дерева відмов до схему надійності. При цьому визначити їх переваги та недоліки. Третє, автор не дає чіткого пояснення, як формула 3.3 квадратично-квадратично сегментована регресія може бути застосована в реальній експлуатації повітряних суток. Але зауважу, що в процесі обговорення автор вже надав відповідь на це питання. Далі, у розділі 3.5 наведено три підходи до оптимізації інтервалу з технічного обслуговування повітряних суток, але не ясно, чи були вони всі реалізовані в запропонованій моделі. Це основні зауваження, причому хочу зазначити, що наведені зауваження суттєво не знижують значущість роботи. 
Таким чином, мета та завдання дослідження, на мій погляд, досягнуті в диссертаційній роботі в повному обсязі. Результати, які винесені до захисту, безумовно, мають наукову новизну та практичну цінність. Зміст диссертації відповідає і і назві, чи положення, які віднесені до захисту, висвітлені в тексті чекти роботи. Диссертація в цілому написана технічно грамотною доступною мовою, оформлена згідно з чинними державними стандартами. Вважаю, що автор заслуговує присудження наукового ступеня доктора філософії за спеціальністю 272 ліцейний транспорт у галузі знань 27 транспорт. Дякую. Yeah, so uh, I only considered um, the failures in flights uh, when I you know, did the, his, uh, the histograms, mostly because that's when it's very catastrophic. However, I know that uh, maintenance, 60% of maintenance is caused by maintenance activities. So therefore, in the future research, I will try to focus on those failures caused by maintenance and how human error also plays a part in it. Then for the second one, I didn't use uh, uh, the, I know it was the fault tree analysis and the Markov chain. The fault tree is just a logic diagram. It doesn't really, um, it doesn't really depict how failure behavior, failure is very stochastic. So those logic diagrams, it wasn't really going to be helpful. Then for the Markov chain, Markov chain is like this in systems in a parallel, probability of this one, determining probability of the next. It wasn't um, realistic to use it for stochastic activities like failure. Hence, I used Monte Carlo simulation because of the type of work I was dealing with mostly on failure. That was why. Um, I forgot the third one. I know, I, yeah, something about regression, how to use it. I already showed it. Uh, it will tell you the hour at which you're expecting the failure based on the failure rate in person. Thank you very much, Yoma. А, якщо в нас е, у членів спеціалізованої вчені ради немає більше питань, зауважень. Тоді пропоную перейти до обговорення диссертації слухувача, голову та членами е, спеціалізованої вчені ради і присутніми на засіданні за бажання. Як це можливо? One word so in English language because it's uh, just a full our attention uh, concentrator, our uh, uh, concentrator, uh, also, uh, Chioma, and I uh, should uh, uh, tell you, my dear uh, members of uh, this very high instance, uh, uh, like say company, and uh, uh, tell you about my touch to. Geoma dissertation, the content, the results, and the importance in uh, the science development in Ukraine. Now we have very uh, difficult uh, condition for our activity. You know about all aviation now, maybe die about civil aviation. Of course, we have many other which are now active, but we know, can't uh, investigate some problem okay, touch to this topic. Maintenance, different types, and how to. Okay. But the uh, department, Sergei Valerich, uh, told us that uh, really the topic very important, very complicated. And uh, taking account the situation in which our Chioma investigate this question, maybe. I have no another uh, opinion like uh, uh, a rate dissertation on high level and at rate to the condition of modern time of this situation. Nigeria helped Ukraine to investigate those questions which we have not possibility to investigate just now. Thank you very much. I am very satisfied of your presentation. Thank you, sir. Some more? Let me call that uh, 
знаходиться в такому колективі і оцінювати таку роботу, тому що видно, що робота виконана в класичному такому стилі Національного авіаційного університету. Відні ріси, скажімо так, наукових школ, наук, і дуже приємно, що знову таки повернувся дисертант, ну, поверділа цю тему, змогла зробити цю роботу саме в ключі такому науському, скажімо так. І ще такий момент, ну, дуже на мій погляд працюють, що, повторюсь трохи, що в роботі затронута дуже актуальна тема, яка стосується всього парку повітряних суден, ну, і Практично ми можемо ну, розглянути у примінні до повітряних судин Нівії, тобто таки має практичний дотик. Тому ну, ще раз вважаю, що робота вполне десятабельна і достойна. Ну, ще хоче висловитися. So in my opinion, uh, are you hearing me? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, in my opinion, uh, the dissertation corresponds uh, uh, to the requirements uh, of Ministry of uh, Science and Education, and uh, the author of uh, the dissertation uh, deserves to be awarded to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me also join to my colleagues uh, with opinion uh, that the dissertation corresponds to requirements and uh, I was uh, uh, it was pleasant uh, pleasant to uh, hear such uh, uh, quick and uh, full answers uh, that uh, dissertant Uh, give us on uh, <laughs> no pause between uh, question and us answer it's uh, um, uh, sign of high qualification it's sign of uh, uh, fast thinking and I mean uh, uh, Chioma is uh, a highly qualified specialist uh, Uh, real scientist. Uh, so uh, I support uh, opinion about uh, that she uh, ma she uh, about uh, your um, uh, present the presented work and uh, state of dissertant. They correspond uh, to uh, doctor of science level. Thank you. Thank you. Philosophy, philosophy doctor. Excuse me. Такі дуже цікава дискусія, відповіла дисертарка на всі наші питання в повному обсязі і дійсно заслуговує на присвоєння вступлення до Хрепозу. I would like also to add uh, that I agree with my uh, colleagues uh, who uh, presented uh, their opinions uh, here. Uh, and also I would like to add uh, that uh, the um, scientific research of the uh, Chioma also in the stream of the modern strategies of international civil aviation organization uh, who recommend uh, to use preventive approach um, in order to enhance the safety of flights. Uh, so um, this is also a very good feature in addition to the um, level of preparation that Choma demonstrated uh, here um, uh, for the uh, 
um, process of optimization when uh, maintenance uh, of aviation, uh, apparatus, equipment, uh, aircraft uh, as well. And I fully uh, think that Choma deserve the degree of philosophy doctor. So, and maybe some more remarks. Якщо не вам більш доповнень, пропоную пропоную перейти до голосування щодо присудження повноцінного наукового ступеня доктора філософії. Є нас заперечення щодо цього питання? Всі за так? Добре. Переходимо до цього пункту нашого порядку денного. Відкрити. Відкрити, так. Пропоную голосування, проводити відкрите голосування. Хто за, прошу підняти руку, проголосувати. Хто проти, отримався, немає. Добре, отже, переходимо до голосування, так. Ставиться... Отже, ставиться питання на голосування щодо щодо присудження покору Онії Дікачі Чіоні вступення доктора філософії з галузі знань 27 транспорт за спеціальністю 272 авіаційний транспорт. Хто за? Прошу підняти руку. Дякую. Хто проти? Отримався? Немає. Дякую. Отже, результати голосування за 5 членів Ради. Проти? Немає. Утримались? Немає. Так. Вважаю, що на підставі результатів голосування спеціалізована вчена Рада в складі Голова Ради Аверіанова Юлія Анатолійовна, доктор технічних наук, професор НАО, Петрова Юлія Валерійовна, кандидат технічних наук, доцент КНАО, Уланський Володимир Васильович, доктор технічних наук, професор НАО, Епіфанов Сергій Валерійович, доктор технічних наук, професор Національного космічного університету Мені Жуковського ХАІ, Вологін Андрій Сергійович, кандидат технічних наук, старший науковий співробітник Державний науково-дослідний інститут авіації Міністерства оборони України прийняли наступне рішення. На підставі результатів відкритого голосування спеціалізована вчена рада присуджує окоронні віка чи чоні ступінь Доктора філософії з галузі знань 27 транспорт у спеціальності 272 авіаційний транспорт. Сіра Чиома і Філон і Ен Атейт Флор. Дякую дуже багато. Це дуже емоційно. I was really young when I came here, and today I have a PhD. I still can't believe it because there were lots of challenges of the way. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much, and thank you everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Оголошую, що порядок денний. Сьогодні виконано і засідання спеціалізованої вченої ради може бути закритим.